Well, good morning and welcome to St George's Church in Woolhope for this Book of Common Prayer communion service for the 23rd Sunday after Trinity. We join together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our queen and governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour and humbly obey her in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. O God, our refuge and strength, who art the author of all godliness, be ready, we beseech thee, to hear the devout prayers of thy church, and grant that those things which we ask faithfully we may obtain effectually. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the Holy Gospel is written in the 25th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 14th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. For it will be as when a man, going on a journey, called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I've made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I've made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not winnow. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sowed and gather where I have not winnowed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to every one who has will more be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. 
and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. There men will weep and gnash their teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who, for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The reading, the gospel reading, the parable which I read to you a little earlier is one where Jesus describes this man, this this owner of this property who is going on a journey and it ends up as being quite a long journey. And he gives to his servants, the three servants, various different amounts of money. A talent is a weight. To one he gives five talents, to another two, and another one. We don't know quite how much money this was, but it's a significant amount of money. A talent is quite a hefty weight. And if it was silver or gold that was being weighed out in that way, well, this is an awful lot of money. He's gone a long time, but in the end he does return back. And perhaps maybe because he'd been away for some amount of time, there were those who even thought he might not be coming back at all. But he did come and he calls his servants to account. Now, when we read the uh, what those servants who had the five talents and the two talents have to say, we, we can almost sense there's some eagerness there. We, we almost sense there is some sort of excitement. Look, master, you left me with, with these talents here and I've gone and I've doubled them. Here they are. There's a sense of eagerness. You get a sense they're glad to see the master back. They're glad to be able to present to him what it is that they have done with the money. And the master is equally warm in his commendation of them. Well done, you good and faithful servants. The servant who had the one talent, though, well, that's a rather different matter. He's sullen. He's grudging. He's misrepresenting his master. Oh, I know you to be a hard man, and so on. And so the master condemns him. He's wicked. He's slothful. He he could have just put the money in the bank, and at least he would have had some interest. But he doesn't. So he's judged, and he's cast out, outside into the outer darkness. So what's Jesus getting at in this parable? Well, it's a parable to do with judgment, clearly, and and according to account. It's a parable talking of somebody who went away and after a long time returned. It's not too difficult, therefore, to understand it, that this is a parable Jesus is speaking about his own return. And yes, this is to do with money, but it's also to do with more than money. We see the master in the parable as Jesus. Jesus gives us gifts. Some of it is financial, yes, but other gifts as well. He gives these gifts to us. And the question is, is that when we come to judgment, either at Christ's return or at our death, the question is asked, what have we done with it? What have we done with that which was given to us? 
Do we share that joy of the first two servants who are delighted with the gift that they received from uh, the master and the grace that they received and they've served him well? Both receive equal commendation. Yes, there are different amounts of money involved, but they both receive the same commendation from the master to both of them. He says, enter into the joy of your master. Well done, good and faithful servant. And it would seem that their hearts were stirred because of their love of the master. You can see that in the response they give to him. And if we were to think this through and think of Jesus as the master here, then surely our hearts are stirred in the same way. Oh, the grace that we have received from God, the forgiveness that we've received from him, the great gift of the Holy Spirit in our own lives, the word of God that we can read and we can engage with God reconciliation with God, the ability to pray, the hope of glory, the solid rock in the storm, the security of knowing that we are God's and that God is ours. With all of this, surely you would want to serve God. Surely when you see the gifts, the talent, the weight, the money, whatever else it is as well, all that he has given you, surely you'd want to serve him in return you would want to maximize what god has given you however much it is five two or one but contrast that with the third servant the ungrateful one sullen and ungrateful self-justifying well i was afraid of you i didn't want to do this it's all excuses oh how i dislike the master how i dislike god we could say as we see what the parable is saying Oh, how God is a hard master. Oh, I don't owe God anything. You, you've heard this. You've heard people say these sorts of things. I don't owe God anything. This is all mine. This life that I live, even a life that I receive, somehow it's all mine. I don't owe God anything at all. At best, this is a kind of I do as I like kind of way of living. At best, in a Christian setting, it's a do nothing Christianity, if it is Christianity at all, more probably, this is just outright unbelief. The sobering thing, of course, in all of this is just because you don't believe in something doesn't mean that it's not there. Just because you don't believe in God doesn't mean that God doesn't exist. Just to dismiss God doesn't mean that we will have to face him. And here you see, like the parable last week, you remember of the five wise and the five foolish virgins. Here we find that judgment is a reality. And like all judgment, some will not pass it. That's the point of judgment. It's to separate. The question in the parable, this parable, is where is the fruit? So if you have a love of God, you serve God, and you make the most of the things that you've been given. That's the fruit. That's where we can see the deeds which accompany a living faith. The problem is, is that with the one who simply buried the money in the ground, there was no fruit to be found, not even the interest that you can get in the bank. There were no deeds which accompanied a living faith. There are some people who feel that you gain automatic entry into heaven through death, almost as we're saved by death alone. That's not the case. Jesus here speaks of a judgment along the way. So let me finish then with a, with a plea. Realise the enormous gift that has been given you, the gift of life itself, if nothing else, but all the other gifts and graces that God has given you. Cherish, cherish the grace that Christ has shown to you. Think on his death, the extreme that he went to on the cross for you. Imagine the love towards you, which prompted him to go through all of this. And rejoice in having the Holy Spirit. Rejoice in having the scriptures. Rejoice in being able to pray. Rejoice to having fellowship with God. Think of the wonder of the great offer that is there. The great offer that you may be reconciled to God. 
Think on that and don't bury it in the ground. Amen. Lay not up for yourself treasure upon the earth, where the rust and moth doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither rust nor moth doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. And yet your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And the offertory hymn is, Let all the world in every corner sing. Let all the world in every corner sing, my God and King. The heavens are not too high, His praise may thither fly. The earth is not too low, His praises there may grow. Let all the world Sing, my God and King. Let all the world in every corner sing, my God and King. The church with songs must shout, no door can keep them out, but above all the heart. Must bear the longest part. Let all the world in every corner sing, My God and King. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole council and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and indifferently minister justice, to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all the bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty. 
provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death, until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. And the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for thee, 
Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee, for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And our final hymn is amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind. Than when we first begin. 
And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.